Six things I wish I knew before becoming a wedding photographer. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. My name is Sal Sincata. I am a wedding and portrait photographer. Been doing this for 16 years now. And in this video, I wanna help you if you're considering wedding photography by learning from my mistakes. So here are six things I wish I knew before I got started in wedding photography. Number one, how inexperienced I really was. It's very easy to underestimate how much work and knowledge goes into wedding photography. It's not as simple as just kind of going with the flow. And so one of the things I wish I would have done was mentor under someone for a lot longer, just to learn the nuances of how to run a wedding day, just to have someone that I could lean on to say, well, if this happens, what do I do in this scenario? And it took me a couple of years to kind of figure all that out. And I would say, you're probably never really ready. Like I said, a wedding photographer for six years, I'm still learning as I go. But for the most part, I feel confident that whatever a wedding day throws at me, I can react and get what I need to get for my client. But in the beginning, I truly do wish and I encourage all of you to do this is look for a mentor who can help you navigate a wedding day because they're depending on the culture, depending on if there's a first look or it's a church ceremony, or if it's an outdoor ceremony, or if it's a beach ceremony, they're all different, different things are going on. It's very nuanced. And that's one of the things as I look back on my career, I wish I would have maybe checked that ego a little bit and accepted it. Number two, how important bridal shows really are to growing your business. This is something that when you talk to wedding photographers, depending on who you talk to, they either love bridal shows or they hate bridal shows. But I'm here to tell you after doing this again for the amount of time I have, if I wanna fill my calendar, I have to go to bridal shows. You can rely on referrals, you can rely on planners to send you business and networking, that will work. You will get business that way, but there is no better way than showing up to a bridal show which by the way, that's where your clients are. Your potential brides, hundreds of them, are showing up to your local bridal show. Why would you not wanna be in a room where all your clients are? If I'm in your shoes and you're an up and coming photographer or considering becoming a full-time wedding photographer, I would question anyone, any photographer who looked at you and said, bridal shows aren't worth it. That to me is the first sign that they have no idea how to market their business. And so when we go to a bridal show, we show up with a full-blown display, right? Because guess what? Brides are walking by and there's no doubt there are a lot of photographers at bridal shows. So it becomes increasingly important or incredibly important, I should say, for you to stand out from your competitors. So how do you do that? Well, by having a bridal show display, right? That is going to showcase your business. You may not have a storefront. When it comes to the bridal show, that is your storefront. So what people are seeing in your booth is your storefront. So as you look at a picture of what my booth looks like at bridal shows, you will see there's a lot of large prints in there, a lot of branding, a lot of display that signals to people this is a high quality photographer. And so we've partnered with H&H &H Color Lab. I'm gonna put the link right up here or up here, it's somewhere, where you can go download the entire bridal show kit that gives you everything you need to look your best at a bridal show. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is consider having like sample wedding albums and only showcase your best products. So I can't emphasize this enough. This is another thing it took me years to figure out how important bridal shows were to connect with and meet not only the next crop of brides that are coming through, right? You wanna look for shows that are in January because the number one month for engagements is December, historically speaking, but this also gives you a chance to connect with other vendors. Think about something for a second. You want referral business from wedding planners, from catering halls, from churches. Why would they refer you if they have no relationship with you? What better way to forge a relationship with other vendors than to be at the same show they're at? And so the time that you spend there is priceless. As you're setting up your booth and taking a break, you should be walking around that bridal show, handing out your business card and trying to set up side meetings and even collaboration shoots with these other vendors it will go a long way to helping you grow your business. Third, how important it is to have the right gear. This is also something that when you're first starting out as a wedding photographer, you become a little bit penny wise, pound foolish. What do I mean by that? Look, we are typically as wedding photographers working in very low light situations. So having fast glass, right? F1.2, F1.4 is critical to you being able to pull off shots that are crisp, clean, and not noisy, right? Because if I have to, yeah, today's cameras, they can go to ISO 2 million, right? But that's not where you wanna operate. For us, 
I will rarely push my camera past ISO 3200. Can I get a usable image at ISO 6400? Sure, but I'd much rather be shooting in a low lit church at F1.2 ISO 800, F1.2 ISO 1600, so that I can get a usable image. What happens in the beginning when you're a photographer is you'll buy a slower lens, and what this will do, and it's every brand, it doesn't matter whether you're Canon, Nikon, Sony, it'll happen to you where you buy the cheaper lens, but in a year or two, you're gonna realize you need that extra speed on the lenses, and then you'll go out and buy it again. So I'd much rather see, again, I wish someone would have told me this, save your money, invest in the right glass so that you only have to buy it once. And that's the beautiful part of almost every camera manufacturer's lens, lens lineup, is that most of it will last five, six, seven, eight years. Yes, you may upgrade your camera body, but you're rarely gonna upgrade your lenses. They will stand the test of time. Number four, the importance of having a second shooter with you. Look, you should charge your client for this to have a second shooter on the job. You shouldn't just include that because you have to pay your second shooters. To go shoot a wedding solo is really setting yourself up for failure. There is so much going on during a wedding day that it is almost impossible for a single shooter to capture everything. And so what ended up starting happening is as I continued to grow my business, I realized how important it was for me to have a second shooter just for what I would call PJ or pickup shots. PJ, photojournalism. Think about something. If you're a wedding photographer and you're taking family pictures, family pictures are not photojournalistic in nature, right? The family didn't just decide to stand up in front of the altar while you lit them with flash and everybody was looking at the camera saying, you know, geez, they don't do that. Please don't have them do that. But there's stuff going on, right? Just in this example, while you're shooting family photos. Well, who's getting that? That's where your second shooter comes into play. So anytime I'm directing during the day, telling people what to do, working with the bridal party, my second shooter is always looking for pickup shots, photojournalistic shots that I can't possibly get. What about during cocktail hour, right? As soon as your camera comes up, everybody wants to get, you know, the grin and grab type shots where they're just looking at the camera. You want your second shooter with a longer lens, off in a corner, picking up more candid style shots. Same goes for dancing and the rest of the day. I think if you wanna present a solid portfolio to your clients, it is so important to have two photographers covering any single event. Now granted, if a client doesn't wanna pay for it or if it's a you know, couple hours of coverage for your wedding day, maybe there's no need for a second shooter, but if you wanna charge more money and you wanna expand the type of services that your studio is offering, having a second shooter became critical to success. And in today, we don't offer any wedding coverage without two photographers. Number five, the importance of showing my clients high quality products. This is another area that it took me time to figure out. So many times photographers just wanna cut corners, either offering their clients digital only solutions, which I think is an incomplete service to our clients. What are they going to do with that? I think back to when digital started really first getting delivered and we were delivering images on CDs and then CDs disappeared. Then it was DVDs, those disappeared. Then it was USB thumb drives, those are disappearing. Now it's USB-C. Guys, if you're giving your clients just digital files and nothing tangible, you are offering offering them an incomplete service. Not only that, you're leaving a ton of money on the table, but herein lies the problem. If you're only offering your clients products that they can get online for a fraction of the price, they're not gonna spend that money with you because they don't see the value. And so by offering high quality products like acrylic blocks, like framed canvas, like wedding albums with Italian leather in a custom box with types of leather that they can't get anywhere else, that is what will allow you to charge more money and stand out from the crowd. And again, once I figured that out, my wedding business exploded. And finally, number six, that wedding day shape is actually a real thing. I don't know how many of you guys feel the way I do, but man, when I haven't photographed a wedding for a while, or I've been, you know, over the winter, I'm kind of in my off season. Maybe I'm eating a little too much, but we don't want to talk about that, adding that a little Italian pasta belly. But when I get back to shooting my first wedding, I am so sore the next day. When I my first, when my feet hit the ground, when I wake up that next morning, it, it just feels like I'm stepping on pins and needles. I don't know if you guys feel that way, but wedding day shape is a real thing. And I remember when I started out as a wedding photographer, photographers would talk about this, how, you know, their Sundays were just a wash, their, you know, their legs, their backs, everything was hurting. And I was like, that's not gonna be me. Well, it is me. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys. If you like this video and wanna see more content like this, subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notified every time we have a new video. And um, let me know if you got anything to add to this, things you wish you knew when you started as a wedding photographer and help your fellow wedding photographer get started off on the right foot. We'll see you in the next video.